Hello, and welcome to Creating with Class. That's Crafty Lessons and Simple Steps with Linda Wirt. Hi, I'm Linda, and today I'm going to be showing you how to import an image into your Cricut Design Space from Dreaming Tree. The first thing you need to do is go to the Dreaming Tree website, and you can look and shop and, and look at all the different projects that they have. Um, they have free files. They have ones that you can purchase. So once you have decided which um, one you want, you're going to add it to your cart. And once you've added it to your cart, then you can go ahead and purchase it and it will be downloaded into your account. Your account can be located over in the upper right hand corner here where you click your name and then click the word downloads. Once you do that, you can locate and find all of the files you've ever purchased or downloaded from the Dreaming Tree website. So I chose a mini daisy tote bag. Uh, so I'm going to click on that and it will download onto my computer. You'll see down here it uh, downloads as a zip file because it has many elements to it. So I need to unzip it. So I'm going to click on that file and get out of Dreaming Tree. And I'm going to go to my downloads folder because that's where I told it to go. And you'll see right here it says mini tote bag. It is zipped, so I need to unzip it so I can get to each of those elements. So I am working on a Mac, so all I need to do is double click it and it opens up the file for me. I now no longer need that zip file, so I can move that to the trash. I'm going to open this up so you can see everything. Um, I right, have here the mini tote bag, so I'm going to open that up and you'll see that you have a couple of things here. You have a menu and you have a JPEG file. I'm gonna open up that JPEG file first. And when you open up that JPEG file, you'll see a picture of what that project looks like on the Dreaming Tree website. You'll see how they put it together, what papers they chose, and how the project should look at the end. The next thing they give you is really neat. It's called a menu. And when you click on that menu, you will see that they give you an itemized list of all the supplies that you need, the sizes of paper that they recommend, and then each of the elements that make up that particular project. They also tell you the size of each of these elements. You'll see here it says 2.6 inch wide for this element, 3.4 inch wide for this element, 10.8 inch wide for this one, and 4.9 inch for this one. Why I like that so much is I can now go to my scrap pile and see if I have paper that possibly I could use without having to purchase new paper or having to use a full size. If you don't have any paper or you want to do exactly like they did, they do have the itemized list here of the sizes of paper that you would need um, if you were starting from scratch. So this is the file that's called Menu. It's a great reference to see everything that you need for that project. Next, you'll see this file called SVG, and we need to open up that SVG, and you'll see each of the elements that you need in order to make up that project. So we're gonna go into Design Space now and bring each of these elements into Design Space, so therefore we can then make the project. So I'm gonna get out of my Downloads folder, and I'm going to open up Cricut Design Space. You're gonna click on New Project so you have a blank canvas. So now I need to upload each of those elements for the project. So I'm going to click the Upload bu button located in the left column. And I'm going to click Upload Image. I'm going to browse my computer. And I am directly put into the Downloads folder because my computer knows that's the last place that I was in on my computer. So I'm going to click the first element, which says Flower Lavender SVG. I'm going to click Open and it brings it into Design Space. It is an SVG file, so I don't need to clean it in any way. So I can just rename the image. I always recommend that you name the image based off of the site that you got it from. So this is Dreaming Tree, so I'm going to label it capital DT for Dreaming Tree. And then I like to label it with the name of what it is on their website. So they call this a Daisy Tote. I'm going to tag this a bag, a tote, and the word daisy. The tags are meant for you to be able to find these through the search engine within Design Space. So in the future, I might want a project that has a daisy on it. So if I search the word daisy, this particular project would pop up as a potential one that I could use having to do with a daisy. 
then go down right to the right hand side here, hit save, and now it is in my image library. I'm going to select that, hit insert image, and bring it into my canvas. So now I have the first element for my project for the mini daisy tote bag. I'm going to hide that for now because I don't need it. And I'm going to click upload to get the next element. So I'm going to hit upload image, browse my computer, go into my downloads folder and pick main pink pattern SVG. I'm going to hit open. It's already all cleaned up because it's an SVG, but I'm going to rename it DT for dream dreaming tree, daisy, and tote, because that's the name on their website for that project. And then I'm going to tag it a bag, a tote, and the word daisy in case I want it in the future. Next, I'm going to go into my image library, click on that image I just brought in, insert it, and now it is on my canvas. Now, one important thing when you are dealing specifically with Dreaming Tree and sometime with other uh, SVG files I've purchased from other websites and designers, this file came in with these little dashed lines, which are score lines. But unfortunately, they're not score lines yet. It came in as a cut file. So if you look over here in the right hand side of your layers, uh, layers panel, you will see it's a cut file. And I don't want it to cut because I don't want little cut dashes in my paper. I want fold lines. So I need to highlight just the cut file and change it to score, which you can do over here under line type. I'm going to change that to score. Now those are score lines instead of cut lines, but it's a separate layer. It's not attached to the paper that makes up the tote bag. For example, if I clicked make it right now, you'll see that the score lines are on a separate mat. They're not attached to the paper. So I need to go back now and attach those score lines. So I'm going to highlight both the score lines and the bag. And you know they're both highlighted because they're both grayed out here. And go down to the bottom of my layers panel and see the word attach and click attach. Now if I were to click make it, you will see that my score lines are attached to the bag. So they will all cut and score one piece. Very important to do that. Otherwise your score lines will be on a separate uh, mat. All right, so for now I'm going to hide that and bring in the next element. I'm going to click upload, upload image, browse my computer, and bring in the third element which says panels. I'm going to relabel that DT Daisy Tote. I'm going to tag it a bag, a tote, and Daisy. Now once again, I'm just going to make sure that I highlight it, just that one, bring it in, and you'll see this one also has score lines, but they came in as cut lines. So I'm going to highlight the cut, change it to score, attach it, and now it is one piece with the score lines attached to it. I'm going to hide that, and I have one more element to bring in. So I'm going to hit Upload, Browse, Flower White, Ring Open, Rename it, Oops. put Tags, and Save. Now I'm going to click that, insert the image, And now I have that in my canvas. So if I unclick everything that was hidden, you will see now I have everything in order to make that mini daisy tote all in one place. Last thing I need to do is to save it. So I'm going to click the save button and I'm going to name it. Still going to do DT for dreaming tree and it is a mini daisy tote and I'm going to click save. So by doing that, now all of these are saved together rather than just separate pieces in my image library. I can click my projects and you'll see here it is located in one place. If I click on that and open it up, I have everything I need. The other good thing is if I'm in another project, because each of these elements are separate in my image library, I could always bring this daisy into a whole nother project because I have it available 
in my uploads library. So I might have a card that I'm making, but I really liked that daisy from the tote, or I want to make a card that matches that tote bag. I can now click this and bring it into a whole new canvas. So it's really important to keep them separate, obviously, so you can see them and maybe use them for other projects. But in order to make this tote in the future, I don't want to have to go into my image library and remember which elements made up that mini tote bag. So bring them all in immediately into your canvas. So therefore you have them in one place as one project. The last thing I want to show you is how I now save them within my computer. So I'm going to get out of design space and I'm going to go back into my downloads library, uh, downloads section of my computer. And I'm going to show you that I still have this opened up from bringing it in. And uh, the name of it is mini daisy tote bag because that's the way they named it. And I'm going to move that into a folder that I have here called SVG files. It's going to take this, I'm going to bring it down, hover over that, and now it dumps it into there. If you notice in my SVG files folder, I have them broken down by where I got them. So I have a dreaming tree folder where if I open it up, you can see all my dreaming tree files that I have. Um, I have files that I've gotten from Jennifer Maker. I have um, ones from Lori Whitlock. And then I have my own that I have created. Um, and then here's the mini tote bag. So it jumped it into that file, but I want it specifically to be in Dreaming Tree so I know where to find it. So this is just a way you can organize your SVG files so they'll be easier to find later. I hope you found this tutorial helpful, especially with working with Dreaming Tree files. If you liked this video, please click the subscribe button so you'll be able to see my future video tutorials. Thank you again and have a great day.